years. First, we're going to do music. And I want to explain that music played a very important role in World War I, both in the battlefield, the home front, and many other Today's places. presentation um, started out uh, with music of the Great War, World War I. Um, the music played a very important part during World War I. Uh, I had no idea until I started doing some research, and it just grew and grew. And so many of the songs from World War I were songs that stayed on for years and years, decades and decades later. Uh, when I was a kid, you'd hear them sometimes in a cartoon or something similar, and it was fun because these songs were generally humorous songs. Um, and uh, they were also very morale boosting and also to allay the fear of the men who were called up in the, the draft of World War I. Because obviously, um, World War I is you know, a person who gets drafted is obviously very fearful. The songs would allay the fear to a certain extent, generate enthusiasm, improve morale, and it would also allay the fear of those at home that Johnny will come home. And um, it just gives them a, a sense of a, a little bit of serenity there. And um, also it helped allay the fear so I said, not the, fe well, the fear in the battlefield, but also the boredom. Um, sometimes troops would la sit in trenches for hours and hours and days even until something happened. So music did play an important part. Beginning of the war, the purpose of aircraft was to for reconnaissance, to see what the enemy was doing. Uh, in the beginning, they used balloons that were filled with helium, tethered to the ground, and two men would sit into, a, into the basket underneath with parachutes on, and they would report from above what was happening out in the battlefield, or how many, how many people were in the trenches, where the trenches were, and that information was sent to the ground, either through uh, bags with written down, dropped below. So later on, it, didn't, it would only be useful up to a certain distance. So therefore, um, air, actual airplanes were necessary. And the first airplanes were strictly the same purpose, for reconnaissance. Get that information of what the enemy is doing and report it back. Later on, as I indicated, um, planes were able, had to be faster and stronger so they could stay away from the enemy and also to carry machine guns. Adding machine guns suddenly made the airplane uh, used for offensive purposes, not just for the purpose of uh, reporting information on what the troops down below or artillery fire. And as you see, now also you'll notice on these airplanes, look at the beautiful propeller. It's all wood, but it isn't one piece of wood. Where's Joe? Joe the woodworker. Joe, why did, why did they laminate the wood? Explain it's why instead of one piece of wood. Because it was stronger coming through the grain. Exactly. For those who don't understand, when you layer several thin pieces of wood and glue it together, it's stronger than one solid piece. And this beautiful looks like walnut. I can't tell you exactly what it is. This was the front of that airplane. The other thing that which makes airplanes sort of interesting was the engines. The engines were either rotary engines. It isn't like in your car. In your car, the cylinders are lined up in a row. A four strength four cylinder, a V8, a V8 has four cylinders and four cylinders in a row. A rotary engine on the early airplanes, and you'll see it in the next photos, the cylinders are, are situated like the numbers on a clock. And that engine also air, it was air cooled. That was the, that, the beginning engines that they used. The, the one I just showed you, that one had um, a very powerful engine that was produced by Packard, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little further. The DH-4, which you just had now. My presentation was about World War I, uh, and primarily about the U.S. involvement in the war, and then also talking about the local East Brunswick uh, soldiers that died in the war, and kind of giving a profile of what their service was, and just important information about how they died and how they served. These are the people that, uh, from this area that died in the war. and. Um, the, uh, I'm going to go the order of actually how they died and kind of give you a little information. Three of them died from disease and one from killed naturally. 
This guy, uh, August uh, Hillier, he died early. Now, what's interesting is um, when you look in here, it's <coughs> the book on these project claims that he died from the flu. He may have died from a case of the flu, but not the flu, because he died in uh, February, and that was before the, the, the big flu epidemic had hit. Um, this was his uh, draft card, and these are some of the relics that survived for each of the soldiers, and it kind of gives basic information about him. And this is a letter was received. Um, what's fascinating about this was is that when he died, he um, he had actually uh, he, yeah he, he was at Camp Dix had happened, and they actually the brigade came and actually gave a special ceremony, which was kind of uh, the war started uh, in Sarajevo. Well, actually, it started before that. I mean, it was there was a lot of. Uh, both sides, different uh, sides of arming each other, getting ready to create different alliances. And then what happens is you have Archduke Ferdinand going down to Sarajevo. He gets assassinated uh, in Sarajevo, and then because of um, the Austrians uh, wanting to come down on Serbia, then Russia supported Serbia, which got Russia involved. And then Russia's involvement brought France and England and then Germany stepped in for uh, Austria-Hungary. Then you've got this big fight here. You got Serbia getting beat up by Austria, Russia beating up on Austria, Germany beating up on Russia. Then you got France and, and, and England saying, "We want to join in too." So that's kind of how it happened. Everybody had these alliances, and they had to, you know, kind of support each other in in the war. And uh, Serbia, as I'll get in later on, took the biggest price of all of these uh, countries as far as the, uh, the debt. This gives you an overview of how the sides were divided. The black is the central powers, which was Turkey, Bulgaria, Austria, Hungary, and Germany. Germany and Austria, Hungary were together from the beginning. Uh, Bulgaria and Turkey came in later, you know, um, you know, in the years after that. And uh, when you hear that Lawrence of Arabia and all that stuff, that's from Turkey's involvement because that was the British putting pressure on the on trying to create a separate front um, down there. Also, Gallipoli was another attempt uh, to try to create that front. The East Brunswick Historic Society, um, this is our, the, the home of the East Brunswick Historic Society. This beautiful building was restored um, about, probably about eight or nine years ago. This used to be a farmhouse um, from the Smith family. This building was on a part of the property that was a large apple orchard, which many people may remember. The apple orchard is unfortunately gone. Um, but they did maintain this building, and um, after a number of years, it took to redo things, new floors, um, the outside, new windows, things along that nature. Um, it eventually became part of the East Brunswick Historical Society. And we're very proud to have presentations here, and um, all of our exhibits are uh, updated based on whatever the presentations are. We welcome people to come visit, and um, it, I found it very fascinating doing the research from my two subjects and um, I hope I, I enthuse others to take a look as far as the history of well, be, whether it be World War I or some other subject. That today we're thankful we have our searches online and a wealth of information is easily available. So um, it's something that I think many others, I, would, I hope I inspired others to do their search on World War I and perhaps other subjects related to that. As a result, the gentleman um, with me today, uh, Brian Armstrong, he tied it in to individuals who were involved from East Brunswick in World War I.